everyone, welcome to Perfections, the channel that is all about practicing perceptions. Today we are going to talk about blue bottles and their beautiful scents. This is part of the series of uh, videos on perfumes with a specific uh, bottle color. So the scent can be any, but as you might understand, blue bottles usually are referring to summer scents, but not only. We will see that. So let's start with the first one. The first one, as per our expectations, is a very nice spring summer scent and very aligned with our topic. This is not a blue bottle, <laughs> it's the name of the perfume. But before getting into it, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and if you're coming back, I'm really happy to have you here again and I hope you like this video. So this is not a blue bottle, it's essentially a floral perfume. It's a very delicate one, but with a distinctive character. It's floral fresh, to be precise, and I find it very appropriate for spring and summer. The main notes that you're gonna smell are lilac and lang lang, or at least this is what really pops up to me. The top notes are ivy and pink pepper. Heart notes are lilac, lily of the valley, uh, <laughs> sorry, lily of the valley, and lang lang. The base notes are sandalwood, vanilla, and white musk. It's a floral perfume, appropriate for spring. Lovely, beautiful bottle. Really, really nice. I don't know if you can see how it is decorated, but you see, yeah, I think you can see that it's... The perfumer of this uh, scent is uh, Luca Marseille, he is um, a very good perfumer. He's very well known in the niche world. And this was This Is Not A Blue Bottle by Histoire de Parfum. Next one we have something that is a bit different than what we would expect from a blue bottle scent and this is a roulement and it belongs to the uh, private line by Chopard and the name is Vanille de Madagascar or Vanille de Madagascar I think it's in French so as you can tell this is a very beautiful bottle it's uh, kind of uh, uh, reminiscent of the gems uh, the Chapard, of course, being a jeweler, a jewelry brand, wanted to, you know, recall their work in the bottles, in the private line bottles. I've just bought this one, I've received it like uh, one week ago or so. And uh, don't get fooled by the name. This is not just a vanilla perfume. This is more interesting than that. The perfumer behind this perfume is the great Natalie Lorson and for gourmand lovers you will know that she is a genius of gourmands. So this perfume opens up with bergamot and matcha and orange blossom. In the heart we get bourbon, vanilla and caramel and the base notes are cedarwood and Haitian vetiver. I'm gonna tell you what I can smell in this perfume. This perfume opens up with matcha latte. So to me, the opening of this perfume reminds me of the smell of a good matcha latte. Then, in the heart of the perfume, I can smell very clearly a good Gen Matcha tea. So for those of you who are not familiar with teas, Gen Matcha is, um, if I'm pronouncing correctly, <laughs> Gen matcha is this type of a Japanese tea, uh, which is a green tea with a roasted uh, rice. And it has uh, some sweet, balsamic uh, and roasted uh, uh, nuances, of course, to it. And then in the dry down, I smell again the matcha tea, but not the matcha latte. I smell really the, you know, the smell of the powder of the matcha. And this is essentially the evolution of this perfume, according to my nose. I really love tea, and so I may be a bit polarized, and maybe there's, you know, I, as I said, I bought it like a week ago, it could be that with time I will 
smell something else, something more in this perfume. But for the time being, I find it to be an amazing good month of forty dollars. I wouldn't even have imagined that a perfume like this could exist. And as you know, when I saw it and I realized it was a matcha scent, I went crazy and just said, "Okay, I'm gonna place the order and get this perfume for myself. I really love." tea and matcha so I had to have it and Natalie Larson is a genius for romance I mean she's a great perfume in general but her romance are stunning the next perfume we are going to talk about is a summer scent very classical and typical summer scent and this is Tom Ford Mandarino di Amalfi Aqua Essentially, this is another toilette, and it's a perfume that is based on mandarin, but not only. It's um, categorized as a citrusy fresh. Uh, what I can tell you is that there are plenty of notes, like top notes are tarragon, spearmint, blackcurrant bud, Italian mandarin orange, lemon, bergamot, grapefruit, neroli, basil. Hard notes are black pepper, coriander seed, orange, orange blossom, clary sage, jasmine, chisel leaf. And base notes are vetiver, ember, labdanum, musk, and civet. So as you can tell, there's a lot of notes. But essentially what this is, is a citrusy scent uh, with some aromatic touches. And this is what you're gonna smell. And the citrusy scent is not sharp at all. It's very, very um, gentle, if we can say <laughs> that. And it's round. It's smooth, and I think the aromatic touches are uh, blending the citruses in a way that makes it smooth. It's a very interesting and beautiful scent, but of course, being it another toilette and the citrusy scent, it doesn't last long. But it's very pleasant for summertime. Then the next blue bottle, we are going to see what. That is, is Paradiso Azzurro by Roberto Cavalli. So the bottle is stunning. I mean, the Paradiso line has really st stunning bottle. And uh, here it is. How gorgeous is that? This one really looks like <laughs> your the seaside. So the perfumer is Louise Turner, she took care of all the Roberto Cavalli line essentially. Then the top notes are citrus fruits, bergamot and lavender and you can smell the aromatic touches in this perfume immediately. The hard notes are jasmine and the base notes are cypress, cashmere wood. So essentially what I can tell you is this is an aromatic uh, uh, perfume, um, it's unisex. You can bring it. You can bring it on vacation, and uh, you know everyone can use it. I think uh, I can smell the freshness of the cypress and uh, the lavender, and you know the sparkling, uh, refreshing effect of the citruses in the opening. Uh, the heart is jasmine, um, but don't think that it's a floral perfume because this one is mainly um, a fresh perfume. I mean, it's a floral fresh perfume, okay? But the florals are very well surrounded uh, by the aromatic touches. I really like it for summertime. Uh, I bought it last summer and uh, yeah, I use it quite often and really enjoyed it. This has average performance. The next blue bottle we are going to look at is Chant d'Extase. Chant d'Extase is part of the very famous line from Mina Ricci. Extas, the Extas line unfortunately discontinued. That this was a very beautiful line with very beautiful bottles as well. And I'm actually sad they had discontinued such beauties. You know, the color here also is a seaside like. It's a very beautiful bottle. The color reminds us of the turquoise of the sea. And 
the scent is very beautiful as well i mean there are if you like sweet scents you need to like sweet scents to enjoy this one but if you like sweet scents and you're looking for a summer scent that is sweet this can be uh, your pick so essentially this one opens up with uh, lemon ginger and pink pepper by the way the perfumer is sophie Labe, and she is a very good one as well the heart notes are champaka flower and jasmine sambac so champaka is a perfume that is like gives slightly slight ever so slight exotic touches it's not like lang lang that is very exotic but champaka gives uh, some exotic touches but mainly what i perceive when champaka is in a perfume to me it smells floral clean it smells clean but in a diff more creamy way compared to uh, lily of the valley or jasmine when jasmine is done in a clean way so to me this is a very sweet summer style clean type of perfume on the base notes we have ambergris vanilla and musk so i think this is a beautiful perfume for those of you who love the um, sweet scents and are looking for their summer take on it and i think it has some uh, ozonic uh, uh, vibe um, marine vibe uh, marine vibe to it as well which is not obvious from this uh, pyramid of the sand but you can smell it that it smells like a summer sand a sweet one now let's move to the next blue bottle and the next one is Cheyenne Blue Scarlet Lily or the Parfum so as you can tell from the name by the name this is a, a lily perfume this is one of the perfumes that I bought when I was on my hunt for the perfect lily perfume it's a floral green scent the perfumer is Julie Massin I have other of her perfumes and I like her style however I'm telling you I'm telling you I don't particularly love this perfume I was very excited about it but then I was a bit deceived when I got it because I think it's a bit vintage smelling especially in the beginning in the opening and then uh, when it reaches the heart of the perfume it's still a bit too floral floral in a awkward way I would say I mean I don't mind it I have used it a bit but I don't find myself convinced about it so the top notes are lotus the hard notes are Asian lily and long lang and the base note is amber or at least this is what it's declared uh, let me oops, show you a bit more of the bottle So the Cheyenne Blue is a niche uh, house from uh, UK and uh, they work with uh, Julie Massen and uh, Massen, I think and um, you know they sell online on their website you can find them also at some of the main perfumeries uh, however I had no chance to try to test the perfume before buying it and uh, you know I had to buy it, you know, blindly. I don't mind it, but I'm not in love with it either. I cannot even say I like it. I don't dislike it, this I can say. I think it's a floral a bit in a sharp way. I don't think it's similar to Bezer Volet. Um, some people are suggesting it may be similar. It's not at all. I think here the, the florals are sharper. I can see why they claim this is a lily perfume, but it, it, it's lacking a lot of uh, characteristics of the lily scent in nature, especially the waxing as the buttery effect, which is what I find super interesting. And then, you know, it's kind of this uh, gourmand touch on a floral. 
but I don't find any of this here, so it's a beautiful perfume, but it has some vintage vibe and the florals are very sharp, so if you if you like florals a lot, like I do, you can blind buy this one, but maybe you don't love it or maybe you don't even like it. I mean, I can see that it's a beautiful and well done perfume, but it's not my style, not as much as I wish it would be. So, um, yeah, it's and the performance is very good, by the way. It's a good performing perfume. Um, maybe sample it. Uh, you can find also ten uh, ml, ml decans of the from the brand. So let's close on a more positive note. So the next perfume is La Belle Fleur Tulip by Jean Paul Gaultier. So this is the last um, flanker, the latest flanker, oops, of the La Belle line, in a styling bottle. It has an embroidery here with a bird and roses, this actual textile. And you know, the color and the shape of the bottle is, yeah, just stunning as usual uh, by Jean-Paul Gaultier. I really like this one. Uh, I'll be honest, I really love aquatic floral perfumes for summertime. I think, that, you know, I really like the, those aquatic scents with fruity touches and uh, floral in the heart, you know, like I really like them. So that is my favorite scent for the summertime. So as you can imagine, I really like this one uh, as well. So the perfumer is the is Quentin Beach. He's very famous for the linear and other scents. And uh, the fragrance notes are bergamot, ginger, blue lotus, lang lang, iris, heliotrope, almond, vanilla, and woody notes. So it's a very complex perfume, if you will. And if you want to hear more details about this perfume, I have a dedicated review here on the channel where I explain all the facets of the uh, scent and uh, you know. I, you can find the details there, but essentially, as I said, this is a, an aquatic floral ambery perfume. It has some uh, freshness uh, in the opening by the ginger, then it goes into the floral with the blue lotus and the lang lang, and um, it has some creamy aspect, probably due to the lang lang heliotrope and almond, and it, it is vanillic um, and ambery, and yeah. So that's a kind of uh, what I can tell you about this perfume. It has some, it's not salty, but you can smell this um, amber, amber that is a bit uh, sapid. So this is kind of uh, the way this one is, but if you want to hear more details about it, uh, check out my video. It's here on the channel. I have uh, the English version as well, of course. You can distinguish the English vid English videos because usually um, either there is an ENG in the title or there's nothing and that means it's in English. I hope this video was helpful, that you enjoyed it and if you did, please give the video a big thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in hearing more about perfumes and activate the notification bell to be notified about my next video. I hope to have you with me in my next video and meanwhile have a good one, bye!